on some actions with the dogs day one and a half I did one find some trouble dog that's my house I guess I gotta go to sleep till you wait for the morning. Yeah, see, I'm John Marston on the other second one, the one, other one I played. Yeah, that one is um, Arthur Morgan, and then you play this character after again. How do you do? Okay. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson. To settle here and build a life for yourself. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that, I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. Call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland? I'm married. Mm. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Okay, Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, four, trains, four, held people ransom. One. So we killed five, people we didn't five. like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but. I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. Okay, Poor man. Even in this cows. new country, memories don't it's really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true. Especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, Let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute, and he was her... Well, I don't know what he was. 
I'm gonna tell him so I was guy. sent off to an orphanage and then <laughs> ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you had. <laughs> uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man in a way. But you killed people. Sure. sure. And I've suffered I've for it. Before. And that's the life I left, or tried to leave. Ah, uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd of pastor. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. Howdy. I lost my other horse. It was better than this one. <laughs> All right, let's head over to the cow pen. It's about time a budding farmer such as yourself learned how to herd cattle. Yep. Just a newbie at this one. Whoa there. Let's go. Thank you for telling me all that back there. It must have been hard for you. Hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. I ain't so sure about that, but thank you. Careful! Come on! You're more of a Come on, easy hell. up now. How are you, Miss McFarland? Easy now. I'm oh. not supposed to hurt him. I can't even ride. <laughs> Two stuff up in this bitch. Your true calling, Mr. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. the Schmidt.
Well, hello, Mr. Marston. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. Then we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, terrible winters, cholera. A very more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiving sun. That whole herd of cattle take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace. And men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always gonna be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. Sneaking around and spying and secret missions. Preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> You're gonna need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's see if we can't wrangle some horses. How do you do, sir? Yeah! Rope up that chicken to start with. some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret who sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches would steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy but the ride? I know ride? we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. And there's few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland. Take 
this one back to the ranch. See you later. Come on, Mr. Marston. Let's rope another one. so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor, but it's straight and it's decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired then. Some deck must be shut. Well done, Mr. Marston. These are fine horses. Hey, Bonnie. Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. you were never married aside from the snobbery that is you sure ask a lot i'm just surprised that's all you must have been quite a catch the fact that you're talking in the past says it all no that's not what i mean you must have had some suitors that's all i'm saying some i suppose here and there a ranch in the middle of hennigan stead ain't really the place to find a husband amos he's a little well you know countrified Where'd you get your airs and graces, Miss McFarland? From a couple of cheap governesses Paul hired to save us from being savages. I'd like to talk about more than just cattle and chickens sometimes, that's all. And after my brother left, it was up to me to become the man of the ranch. He'd never admit it, but my pa's a lot frailer than he looks. You're worth two of any man I know, miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. In many ways, my wife is kind of like you, Miss McFarland. Is that so? She's always been a woman in a man's world. You don't talk about her very much. Looks like the ranch hand's up ahead. Let's drive them up the canyon where it narrows. We'll trap them there.
magnificent animals they are. Hey, the stallion's getting away! Chase him down! Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal. Let's go. Murphy's the name. Hello, sir. There you go. I can only put the Jeb Murphy name on top items. Nice doing business. We ain't gonna maintain our regional supremacy if that bad element remains. Thanks. That's good. I ain't forgotten about that debt bill. We meet again.
Buffalo 731. What is it with these things? Hello. It's a new line. Hello. Hello. Sounds fun. What's happening? I have no idea. Yeah, if it's important, they'll send someone down like they did with you. Suddenly, the world is full of days. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we first got here. We used to consider people from Dade County to be exotic. Now guys can get here from the Midwest, and they can do it in six days. Things have changed. <laughs> They've gotten away from me. Hello? I don't understand it no more, boy. Honest goodness. I'm not sure I do. <laughs> Marshal! Marshal! <coughs> Marshal! I've just been up in the canyon, spying like you said. I think I've seen me a couple of them rustlers. I think it was the Baller Twins and a couple of Mexicans. They up there right now? Well, it was a group of four men rounding up Mr. Gulch's livestock, and none of them looked like any of Gulch's hands, so yes, sir, right now. That sarcasm is most unbecoming, Eli. It's going to hold you back in life, even worse than your lazy eye. All right, let's go. You ride with us again, Marson? Will you help me? I will try. It'd be my pleasure. I came because it was made impossible for me not to. You sure are a tight-lipped son of a bitch, mister. I guess I am. I ain't gonna dig this hole no deeper. Well, ain't you all proud and superior? Don't forget you need us more than we need you. Bill Wigson folded you up like an empty purse the last time, if I remember correctly. Simmer down, Jonah. Listen to your boss, Jonah. There's a good boy. Otherwise, I'll put a hole in your hillbilly head and watch your tiny brain drain out. Be honest with you, Marson. I ain't for all this government interference. Believe me, Marshal. Neither am I. I try to keep the federal boys happy. I mean, we need all the help we can get. But what does a flannel mouse city boy who's never forked a bale of hay in his life know about a state like New Austin? Nothing, I reckon. All this manifest destiny hogwash came in a wild land. We're nearly there. Keep your eyes out for the ballers. boys let's proceed on foot from here let's move up the canyon towards the fort boy george be ready boys we're probably going to be outnumbered <laughs> and those bastards ain't short on firepower neither let's see how many there are if we can take them alive good if not smoke the sons of bitches music to my ears marshal Coming from you, friend, that's a real compliment.
Just a little something for my troubles. For Christ's sake! Follow me! For the love of God! Very quick. I ain't following. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you down there for me. Alright, follow me, boys. Fucking go to the cliff. <laughs> no, no! Yes, the west still is one! Still run away. Are you kidding? Stay with me. Hey, little assistance would be nice, Marston. Let her in. Clear, boys. Let's get over this bridge. I'm the goddamn law. Damn, those Baller twins got themselves an army. Yeah, rustling's a profitable Jump business, and they ain't short on, the on willing recruits these days. <laughs> but the rancher can't pay him because of. Marshal of yours sure doesn't seem to mind getting his hands dirty. Oh, he ain't afraid to pull the trigger, all right. And he's been after these rustlers for a long time. He tell you he's all about the book, letting the judge decide a man's fate, but he throws out plenty of his own justice, too. I plant you shallow without a reason, boy. More rustlers, take them down. <laughs> Don't do it, then. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. I was trying to reload. And then it jumped. <laughs> Fuck. I've been stupid. Fuck. <laughs> Untie those hostages. 
Thanks, Marshal. We're indebted to you with our lives. Just get them cattle back safe. All right. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Marston. Yes, well done. Now, about Williamson. I'll do what I can. You know, as you can see, this country is infested with all manner of scum. Say that again. Well, one other thing, Marston. Mr. Johnson, sir. It's Mr. Wes Dickens. He's missing. Who? Mr. Wes Dickens, the tonics merchant. He was due in town last week. Oh, the narcotic and bat piss salesman. The cons housewives out of their money with promises of eternal youth. Yes, him, but I think you're being a little unfair. He's helped a great many of the county, and many of the townsfolk are really missing him. You hear that, Marston? We just butchered a gang of thieves, and the town is up in arms about a missing snake oil merchant. I am so glad to be serving such a wise and respectable people. Come on, Eli. When you kicked me out late at night, I remember being dressed up like Judy and Lance and Nicole and Lucy 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 and Jerry and then one got caught to get wood. of the horses secure and the chicken. Well, thank you, Amos, but it's the herd I'm worried about. I know. They're scattered all over the valley and beyond. The weather is coming in real fast. So what do you suggest, Amos? We leave the herd out there to be scattered by the storm and ourselves left here to die without a livelihood? Can I help? No, miss. If the men get caught out in that storm, they're gonna die. And if we lose our herd, we'll all die, you stupid man. Doesn't sound like we're left with much of a choice, then. Come on, Amos. Round up your men. Let's get the herd. Dang. Faith is a luxury I can't afford. We have two herds out grazing in different pastures. 
We'll need to merge them and bring them all back. I think we can handle that. The cows get real ornery in bad weather. It's more work, but I'll show you how to deal with them. I'm gonna save my voice for the herd. It's gonna be hard shouting over this storm. I did that to my dad too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my dad doesn't like people texting when they do that. He's like, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even the um, Chinese food from the Cedar Inn.
up there. You might make a decent rancher one day. Thank you, Miss McFarland. That's making corned beef. How's it? Put corned beef on the counter. Alright. How about I make you famous? All you gotta do is agree to a duel. You think you're faster than me? Don't get along. Oh no. <laughs> 